here, First Corinthians chapter number 8, and uh, we're going to read the simul... Uh, let's read together, mga kapatid, from verse number 1 to 13. 13 verses, quickly nga ipumagal. Read with me, go now as touching things offered unto idols, as we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning therefore the that are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is none other God but one. Say amen. I believe that. Verse 5. For though there be there are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge. For some with conscience of the idol unto this are eat it as a thing offered unto idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. But meat commended us not to God. For neither if we eat are we better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. But take heed lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. For if any man see thee which has knowledge sit at meat in the idol's temple, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened to eat those things which are offered to idols? And though thy knowledge shall be weak, brother, perish for whom Christ died. Verse 12, But when ye sin so against the brethren, and would their weak conscience ye sin against Christ. In closing, together now, Wherefore, if meat make my brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. If you consciously and understandably read that, uh, Paul now has shifted quickly from what he's talking about now to the issue of meat and eating. Pagkain. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Corinthian church is a church in a city uh, started by Paul but in a small house with two business, whip, uh, business couple. And they grew and preached the gospel, and they're in living Mangapati in a very urban place. They have mixed crowd, Mangapati. They have learned people as Greeks, philosophers. They have religious people as Jews, and now they have forgotten Mangapati. Sino sila? But sila naligtas, but sila simbahan. And now they are doing many things that they're not supposed to do. And now that, that, that they are no longer reaching people, they are now having troubles inside their church. And now Paul is writing them two letters rebuking them and telling them, reminding them who they are, why they started as a church, what's their purpose, mga kapatid. And today, we are preaching on the 18th message. Before I pray, ngay let me say, I, as a, a pastor, mga kapatid, in this church, I fear that as God has blessed us materially, physically, that there's a danger, mga kapatid, forgetting why are we here and what we are supposed to do. You know, uh, I've said in the past, especially five years, there's a lot of Baptist churches, but they missed it. They've forgotten my, what they are as a church. And my, by the grace of God, we don't want to neglect that in our church. By, God, by God's grace, my, I, I, I would commit as your pastors, the Lord still tells my, to keep us focused on why we're here and what we're doing. And I know we got a lot of ministries, but I pray today that we will learn insights from this church so that help us stay faithful and stay committed until Jesus Christ comes or until death calls us home. We pray. Father, now I pray, bless your word, bless your people. Lord, thank you for our first time guest. And I pray that they would listen and know that we're not preaching about the religion. We're preaching about a Savior that loves us and died for us. And Lord, we're now looking at the book of the church at Corinth. I pray now, open our eyes, our minds. But on truly, I pray ngay bumaga that our people would not just be listening with their ears. I pray that they will listen with their hearts. No, I pray we get the passion, the purpose of the first church at Jerusalem. 
And never forget that in our 21st century. And so now, hide me behind the cross. Help us, Lord, listen now attentively, intentionally, the Word of God. And Lord, after everything is said and done, may we not just leave this place the same person we came in. We leave this place a better people for Jesus Christ, a better church on our 18th year of ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, amen. Please be seated. Alam mo, kanina po, kahapon, nanalo ang gilas. Amen. Na, 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 naalala ko, na bago kahapon, may isang post. Sabi, yung mga kaibigan ko, si Atty. Monsayak, lahat my good friends, galit na galit. Ang problema daw natin, kaya hindi manalo ang gila sa iyong coach. And so, kagabi, I think, they proven that we have a big team, a great team. And by the way, tinawag natin ay China, amen. At least sa basketball, amen. And uh, we love that. But I mentioned that ngayon pumagan, she said, Pastor, why we open with, with, uh, with gilas and basketball? Let me tell you why. What if, mga kapatid, uh, imagine this ngayon pumagan, what if uh, ang score ay tie 90 pareho? There's only about three seconds to go on the time clock. Na-foul ka. Ikaw ang nasa free throw line. Uh, sorry pala, lamang, lamang ang, ang kalaban ng uh, two points. 88-90 ang score. Ikaw ang nasa free throw line with three seconds to go. And by the way, uh, hindi na, you cannot go overtime because may injured na yung mga kasama mo. Ikaw na lang. Naandun. So naandun ka sa free throw line. Nagsisigangan ng mga tao. You know, excited lahat. Sabi ng coach mo, wag mong shoot. Okay? Miss lang. Yung una, shoot. Yung pangalawa, miss mo. Bago i-rebound niya, kukunin niya, kukunin niya. Bago i-lay up natin para makalamang tayo at least two points. Are you getting me? Say amen. Yun ang play ng coach. At doon ka sa free throw line. Shoot ka, siyempre, ikaw ang star player. Inisip mo, nakakahiya pag natalo kami. So itatay ko na lang. So shoot ko pareho. So iniisip mo yung sarili mo, yung reputasyon mo. You know, ikaw ang star player. So, hindi ka nakinig sa coach. Ang nangyari ay shoot mo yung una, nag-shoot. Yung pangalawa, gusto mo talagang i-shoot, dapat imis mo. Ang ginawa mo, na-shoot mo. Nakuha mo, amen? Nakuha ng kalaban, na ilabas agad, na iba to, mula sa kabila, pagbunta sa kalang coach. Tug. Panalo yung kalaban. And if you think about that, but kaya? Eh kasi, hindi ka nakinig sa coach eh. Dapat nakinig ka dun sa coach. Hindi mo inisip yung isip mo at saka yung gusto mo at saka yung iniisip mo lang. And I tell that today because that's exactly what's happening at the book of Corinth. When you open ngay bumaga in chapter number 8, for the last 8 chapters, mga kapatid, Paul is telling them the problem with you, church, is not you're not thinking about what God wants you to do. You're thinking about what you want to do inside the church. People might like to do what they want to do inside the church. They forgot to know and remember that they are in church not to do what they want to do, but to do what God wants them to do. Say amen. So, ang issue po ngayon, if you look at your Bibles in verse number 8, chapter 8, verse number 1, now, sabi ni Paul, concerning, watch this, concerning what? Are you with me? Say Amen. Things offered unto idols. We know that we have knowledge, but listen to this, knowledge puff it up, but charity edifieth. Ngay Bumaga, I like to preach, and by the way, before I give out our message, Ngay Bumaga, I've said about four Sundays ago, listen to this, that the church that focuses on serving the Lord strengthens marriages and strengthens families. Don't you ever think, mga kapatid, and be stuck with the knowledge that if I serve God, it's just strengthening the church. No, no, no. We've seen that in the last seven chapters, mga kapatid. Paul is not just encouraging the church must serve the Lord, but as they serve the Lord, they are strengthening their marriages and their families. They talk about fornication. Paul's talking about, mga kapatid, uh, sins inside the church, immorality. But when you are focused on serving the Lord, 
the, the natural result, the, 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 the basic result is to strengthen your marriage, strengthen your family, and the natural result is this, that you're going to strengthen the church of Jesus Christ. But could you imagine if Paul is going to the every details of what they're doing to the effect that even Paul now is discussing issues concerning sa pagkain. Alam mo, napansin mo sa isang, sa isang pagmagulo ang Christian life mo, ang magulo ang simbahan, miski yung pinakamaliit na papansin. You, you, you know what's the problem? You, 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 listen to this. You know, a church is in a very bad shape. Pagka yung kaliit-liit na bagay, napapansin. Ay, hindi naman planchado yung damit ng choir, sintunado pa. Sa dami ng pwedeng pansinin, yung maliliit ang nakikita. Eh, magiging 140 tayo pag hindi kayo ngumiti at saka hindi kayo may man. Uh, you talk with me ngayon bumaga. Yeah. Sa daming magandang ginagawa ng Panginoon, Ang issue ng Corinthian Church ay hindi soul winning, hindi kalawa na ligtas, hindi nababagong buhay. Ang issue nila ngayon ay pagkain. Nakaka-offend naman to, kain ng kain. Yun galing sa piyesta. Hello, hello, that, that's the issue. Yun ang issue. Ipo. Yung simbahan nagkakagulo. Itong kapatid ito, karnal to, na may piyesta, kumakain ng mga pagkain na inalay sa mga patron. Yun ang issue. Are you listening? I'm not... That's the issue right now. But I guess, mga, that's the issue because wala naman silang sinihan noon. Okay, amen. Wala naman silang Netflix noon. But ayaw kayo, amen. Wala na... Wala silang... Yun ang kanang... Well, I'm saying that because ngayon sa ating church, there's a lot of issues. I mean, when you look at persons that, ah, nanonood na lang sini yan. Sabi ng isa, nanonood nga ako ng sine, Spider-Man lang. Eh kasalanan yun, eh ba't ikaw nanonood ng Spider-Man sa bahay mo? Di ba kasalanan din yun? Hey, talk to me, say man, talk to me. They're talking about things, issues, mga kapatid. Eh, ikaw, meron kang, uh, uh, ano, nanonood ka ng Netflix. Di ka nga nanonood ng sine, pero nanonood ka naman Netflix. Parang ayun yung mong may men. And by the way, if I chase that rabbit today, ngayon po umaga, mga ba, will not be able to end the service. But Paul starts, listen to this, are you with us, amen? Paul starts with a great, great truth, mga ba, that we could learn from this church. So this morning, I like to preach a message on the subject, arrogant knowledge or edifying love. That's our message, Nibu Maga. Arrogant knowledge or edifying love. Look at your Bibles, verse number one. Sabi po ni Paul, at the onset of this, this twist of, of an issue sa kanilang church. Look at verse number one. Sabi ni Paul, now, as concerning things offered unto idols. That's their issue. That's a gray area in their Christian life. That's a gray area that people are talking about there in that church. He says this, mga kapatid, from the very beginning, listen to this. We know that we, that we all have knowledge. So meaning, mga this church is a very well-taught church. This church, mga kapatid, mga kapatid, they know doctrine. This church, mga they, they know many things from the Word of God. They know it. But listen what Paul says. Verse number one. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. At the very onset of this chapter, mga kapatid, Paul set a principle, laid out a principle that's going to be very important, not just in their time, but in our time as we deal with daily issues in your Christian life. Knowledge, sabi ni Paul, puff it off. But the Bible says, mga kapatid, but charity edifieth. I mean, thank God that we have a great teaching ministry. Thank God, mga kapatid, I'll tell you what, we have a Bible school, we have a seminary. Listen, uh, I thank God we are a lot of good people, mga kapatid. We know who we are. We know what we stand for. Listen, I'm a Baptist from head to toe. I love the Word of God. I'm not ashamed about that. I know our message, mga kapatid. I know our doctrine. 
But the problem with many Christians who know a lot is that they become proud. And by being proud, mga kapatid, they have the tendency to be argumentative. They have a tendency, mga to be judgmental. They have a tendency, mga kapatid, to have this attitude, the, the Pharisee attitude, I am holier than you. Talk to me, say amen. So this is what's happening in the church. Sabi hey! Those are idols. Hindi yan nakakahinga, bago inaala yan, bago kinakain nyo. Ano ba kayo? And Paul now argues and says this, hey, yeah, we know it. We know that they are idols, they don't talk, they don't smell, they're not alive. And so even if it's over there, wala, wala ba tayong paki, paki dyan? Because alam natin ang totoong Diyos, kahit kayo nyo offer yan, dahil tayo po'y kristyano, hindi it doesn't affect us, and though that's the doctrinal and the logical discussion there. Are you with me? Say amen. Yeah. Yun ang issue. Sa yung isa ano, eh, oo nga, alam natin yan. Pero kaya kami kumakain. Ano ang pakiram, hindi kami apektado yan, kahit ba. Galing sa pungso yan. Kahit ba, New Year mooncake yan. Masarap naman yung pagkinain yan. It doesn't affect me because alam ko kung sino ako, ang totoong Diyos ay buhay. Yan, inalis pa tayo, it doesn't affect us. And those are the argument. Are you still with me? Say amen. Now, by the way, before I preach, parang mix it. Sino nagbasa na yung 1 Corinthians chapter 8 bago mag-preach? At least dalawa lang kami. At least nadagdagan na kami. Amen. Next Sunday, you read ahead. So we're going to have a short introduction to the message. I'd like to play out a very clear context on this. Let me tell you about the issue with this. It's not just very simple. The issue, mga in this chapter, and by the way, you would think, why would God allow to be written in the Word of God? Very simple, basic, small issues in the Word of God. I'll tell you why. Because God has a purpose. There's a very great truth that every church, not just in Corinth, should see, especially in our church in this age. Because the issue there, mga pa, is this. Look at your screen. The issue is not just eating meat at the temple. The issue is threefold. It's three-layered, mga pa, It's eating meat at the temple. It is sacrifice meat na naibenta sa palengke na binibili ng mga kristyano. Or, in-invite yung kristyano you member ng church ng Corinth, sa kaibigan niya, kumain sila, na yung palang kinain nila ay galing sa mga karni na isnacrifice sa idols or binasbasan bago binenta sa palengke, bago inahapag sa pagkain, inimbitahan ka naman kumain. And so it gets very complicated. Are you with me? Say amen. You understand that? That's the issue. Yeah. Hindi yan madaling issue. Ang problema nila. Madaling makita yung mga karni na nasa templo ng idols na kinakain. Sabi ng kasan, no, 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 hindi talaga yan. Eh sabi niba, eh paano naman yung binenta sa, binasbasan sa templo nila, eh binenta sa palengke, nabili mo, kinain mo. Paano naman yung pumunta ka sa kaibigan mo? You know, namiesta ka, amen. <laughs> Kumain ka doon, hindi mo alam kung saan galing yun. And so these are issues, and we laugh. Some of you are laughing because you know this. Some of you are just new in the, the church, and so you're just wondering, What's going on? I'm going to tell you something going on. Because the real issue is this is not the issue. Paul is telling them, you have been focused on an issue. Really, my brother, does that affect you? Are you with me? Say amen. Now look at your Bible. So you don't believe me. Pandi kanin niyo wala eh. Look at your Bible. Look at verse number 5. For though that there be our called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and, and, and lords many. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, and of whom are all things, and we are in him, one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom. And Paul says, hey, listen, we're not affected by what's that. But Paul likes to teach a principle to these issues, my brother. And I pray that you listen as I begin preaching. Say amen. amen. Let me begin, my brother, with this truth. Let me begin this message by the closing. Okay? Knowledge is a God-given window into reality which we can view life. But if it is not controlled by edifying love or love that builds other, it is a dangerous weapon that destroys rather than builds 
whether it be a marriage, whether it be a family, and also may it be a church. Amo yung karunungan, yung kaalaman is good. And by the way, this is where we hear preaching, say amen. So we go to growth points. So why all our leaders go through seminary? We need to know. We cannot make a decision. We cannot make a conviction without any information. But don't li listen to this. And I'm trying to start my message by the conclusion, mga kapatid. But you be very careful. The more you learn from the Word of God, the more God teaches you things from the Word of God, then it must always be accompanied by a love that builds others. I've seen many, I've been in the ministry for many years. I'm now turning 50 years old. Been pastoring for more than half of my life. Been in churches here, whether in the States, whether in Japan, whether in, I've been preaching them, mga Ano problema sa imbahan? When they get, become very old, they become very, very, you know, very, very matured. Now, people, mga kapatid, would see others just like them. And because of what they know, and what they have already, mga kapatid, applied in their life, they expect others, mga kapatid, to do, to be exactly like them, and to think like them, and by doing that, telling them what they know, rather than showing them the love they have for them to be able to reach that maturity as well. Tapos yun yan? Insan, nasa simbahan, Huh! Gini tsura mo! Bihira, karnal ka, no? Hindi ko ba alam? You know what I'm saying? And I could go on tonight. This morning, are you with me? Say, umi, 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 kayo, magwa 140 dahil nito. And I'm not saying we, we, we take off knowledge. I'm not saying we just, we just implement love and love many people and all people, whatever and whatever. They do. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying this, Muhammad. Our knowledge, our growth, our maturity should be a tool so that we could love more people and bring them closer to the Lord. Say, amen. And so, umi, umi, kayo, I'm ready to preach. Number one, like you know this. As many issues like this, when you are faced with an issue, are you listening? Say amen. Church, are you listening? Amen. amen. When you are faced and when we are faced with an issue that we might call a gray area in the Bible. By the way, it's really black and white. The Bible makes very clear, black or white. Your gray area are things that you might say, but I make usap isang araw. Sabi niya, Pastor, alam mo simbahan namin, ang bawal ang inom. Kasi nasa Bible yan. Pero yung paninigarilyo, hindi bawal sa amin. Wala kang makikita sa Bible, no smoking. Sabi sa akin. Pag napakita mo sa Bible, na bawal manigarilyo, then, titigil ko. And I will submit to you, wala kang makikiting verse sa Bible na no smoking. In fact, I remember this, I tell you this, I was preaching in North Carolina. Alam mo sa North Carolina, ang kanilang ang kanilang ano dyan, ang kanilang uh, tawag dito, industry, tabako. Kaya andyan ang Philip Morris, ang Marlboro, andyan lahat. Sa North Carolina, ang dami rin Baptist dyan. Yung mga sa, sa, sa mga bundok, sa mga parang probinsya sa atin, suluk-suluk. So I was invited to preach. I forgot where North, uh, Brother Scott would go. I, I, I preached in North Carolina. Went there very early. And my, I was called, it's a Baptist church. So I preached, I mean, the pastor said, Pastor, you, would you preach our Sunday school? So I preached Sunday school. Then they have a break, 30 minutes break. Because I preach in Sunday school, 30 minutes, malita yung church, lag cabin. Na wala lahat ng mga taong naglabasan. Pati babae, yung mga adults, kasi adults Sunday school, naglabasan doon sa labas, pati yung lalaki. Sabi ko, wala naman ka akong store dito, naglabasan lahat. Ako lang naiwan sa auditorium. So I was wondering, ano nangyari? So gusto mo pag-fellowship, sa lumabas din ako, paglabas ko, lahat sila naninigarilyo. You know, lahat, yung mga... Kasama yung pastor, say amen. Ayan, pastor, yung mga dikol, lahat, baptisto, ah. And I was, I was asking them. I mean, to be honest, I was shocked. First time to be in a Baptist church that smokes. North Carolina. And so, this is what I mean. I, 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 I said, hey, hey, pastor, well, you look at the pastor, I said, pastor, pastor, well, do you, do you, do you smoke in this church? I said, yeah. So I said, yeah, I know, I know what you're going to say gonna say that it's it's a sin but could I tell you this it's not in the Bible 
Say, Pastor, with, with all due respect, I know I'm your guest, but could I be honest? I know it's not in the Bible, but in the Bible it says this, your temple is the body, is the temple of, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Glorify God in your body. I told the pastor, if you get sick and you're not going to get sick, you can't glorify God in that body when you're sick. I said, well, you, you, you should not be saying that in our church. Because these people, their, their industry, yung mga member nito, mayayaman. Sila mga may plantation ng mga tabako doon. Eh. That's, that's, that's their, their livelihood. Yun ang kanilang banap buhay. Yun ang ranchers growing up tabacos. And I told them, may pastor, with all due respect, I respect what your people does. I respect that they work hard, but listen to this. As much as I respect them, I still believe the word of God. But I tell them this, if, would not be, I would not be preaching against it. Because I listen to this. But I'm going to be preaching truthfully about it. And I began to preach. Again, I began to preach. And I, I, I tell to myself, since it's going to be my first and last in this church, I'll be able to come back. I was this. I preach and talk about things. I've been no smoking. I'm not, I don't deal with smoking. I talk about... I mean, I've changed my message. I talk about uh, how God can use you. How God can use mga uh, your life. Uh, you cannot be used if you have a sickness, if you have a cancer in your lungs, and if you have, if you have cancer in your throat, and, and this thing not destroys you. But thank God, God wants to use you. You want to be healthy. I'm preaching that. And I, you know, I, I, I don't want to compromise, but listen, I've told them truthfully with love. Guess what, mga brother? After that, I got a big love gift. Umayman naman kayo, para ayaw niyo kumayon kayong love. I got a big love gift. Sabi ng sasayang, Pastor, you're the first pastor to preach not really against it, but about it. So there's a difference, mga kapatid. Many times sa ating mong church, our knowledge is used to be against something. But we're not helping, mga kapatid, people and telling them about it so that they would be able to understand what's God's purpose in their life. So three things, I'd like to encourage you, and I'm done. I promise you, I'll be out. It's 11.25. May amen kayo, so four minutes na lang time to preach. Amen. Number one, when you're faced with issues in your life, when we're faced issues in a church, number one, quickly determine the priority. Is it your knowledge or your Christian love that's important? Now, let, let, let me allow you to sink that in. May bumaga. Because what I tell you, Ibumaga, is something I apply as your pastor. I, I've, I've dealt with many issues in our church. I've talked to many people, mga patid, and I could go on and tell them, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. But many times I think if I tell them they're wrong, then did I tell them what's right? Point, they did, they, 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 were they able to understand what's the truth because of they know that I tell them that because I love them. Somebody said, when love is felt, the message is heard. Kahit anong sakit ng sinasabi mo, kahit anong tulad pero alam ng tao na mahal mo sila, this is going to make a difference. Ang problema sa Corinthian Church, mga kapatid, they are just trying to get somebody against somebody and they're just trying, mga kapatid, to compete with one another and they say, hey, I'm more spiritual than you. I am more knowledgeable than you. And they're now, mga kapatid, going to the flesh, meaning, mga kapatid, they are about themselves, what I know, what I want. And yet they forgot about their purpose. And that's, not, that's about them. It's about people getting saved and getting closer to God. Nakalukas mo rin baptist ngayon? Nag-aaway-aaway, pero walang naliligtas. I was on another church ngayong ngayong week. I mean, they're fighting. They're fighting. They're fighting. Yung mga bata nila, yung kanilang mga anak sa simbahan, pakikigal, pari-away sa simbahan, simbahan. Listen to this. After tw- many years, yung kanilang anak, wala sa simbahan ngayon. Wala. Talk about a lot of bad things about inside the church. And this wanting to win an argument, mga kapatid, and to win a doctrinal uh, stand and, and all those, but they forgot about a soul that's, gone, that's waiting uh, around their building, souls that their loved ones need to be saved, but people that those them, their children, they forget all that simply because they want to be able to be puffed up with their knowledge. Ano na na? Salvation or illumination? Ano 
Ano ba talaga? Election, uhus, everywhere. Sabi ko sa pastor, nag-uusap po sa kayo, pareho kayo ligtas. Amen. Nag-uusap sa kayo, pareho kayo ligtas. Ang daming mga kalawang hindi ligtas, inuubos siya sa pag-uusap niyan. Yung napakaliit na split hair na in-split niyo pa. Are you listening, Jaime? Yeah. By the way, I'm preaching about that because I know it's come to our church. Baptist church, mom, that's about something that I know better than you. I know more doctrine about you. You're wrong. My doctrine is right. Tama ulit ka ba? Ibutak lang Amen. Tama ulit ka ba? Ibutak lang Amen. Pagkakaroon ng amen. Pagkakaroon ng amen. Pagkakaroon ng amen. Pagkakaroon ng amen. Amen. Pagkakaroon ng 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 Eh, ikaw, paano ko na-save? Ako, uh, naka, may nag-abot sa akin ng trucks bago na-invite ako sa church. Bago, ganon? Eh, baka hindi ka ligtas. Kasi kung kaligtas mo, sinasabi ganyan, bago, naligtas ka dahil may nag-witness sa'yo, may nag-witness sa'yo, may nag-witness sa'yo, baka hindi ka ligtas. Parang na-confuse na kayo sa amen. And I know the problem there in the Christian church, the Christian church is food. But no, but the principle is this, there's a lot of Christians in churches, they are arguing about little things. Ba't ko kumakain ng baboy? Wala naman sa Bible yan. Amen. Dapat huwag kang kakain sa ba- mga lahat ng mga, mga, mga hayop na walang biak ang paa, walang kaliskis, gumagapang sabi, bawal kainin sa Bible yan. Ikaw ang hinihilig mo sa sugpo, hinihilig mo sa sipon, hinihilig mo sa baboy, may high blood ka na ba? Baboy pa rin ang kinakain mo. Hindi mo alam, karnal ka. And, and that's the problem here. They're concerned with little issues, but they forgot that they're there because there are souls that need to be saved. And people need to grow. So when you're facing with the issue with a Christian inside the church, you have to quickly determine what's your priority. Is it your knowledge or your Christian love? Are you listening? What's your priority? Church. Pakitaan na magaling ka, ikaw ang pinakamatalino, ikaw ang pinakamaraming doktrina, ikaw ang may alam sa ganito. And sa ibu ni Paul, he's going to talk about that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with men, tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I'm like a sounding brass or a tingling symbol. In chapter number 13 of your book, 1 Corinthians, he's going to talk about love. May, whether you, could, you know everything, you have everything, but if you don't have love, you don't have an edifying love that builds, it's nothing. We could tell the world we are the best educated people. We have the most educated members. But we have the best doc- we have the best doctrinal argument, uh, uh, apologetics, Dito. We could tell about that. But if souls are not getting saved, there's no life being changed. Hey, well, that's nothing, man. Yeah. Yeah. Ang, ang uso kasi ngayon pa agalingan. And it's happening right now. That's happening in the Corinthian church. That's happening right now. Ang problema talaga ng simbahan, pag wala na naliligtas, lahat na nakikita. Hindi mo nung Sunday, ang saya. At saka ngayon. Hindi mo, pag may bago, masaya. Amen. Pag wala nang bago, sawa na kayo siya sa isa. Ikaw na naman. Ikaw na naman. Ano lang yari? Ay din nakita mo hindi na ibang tao kalo anak mo yung kasama mo sa simbahan. Ikaw na naman, naligo ka ba? Yan naman pala damit mo, yan din damit mo lang Sunday, di ba? Wala ka ba ibang damit? Siguro mahirap to. Bago i-chichisis mo, chichisis mo. Yan na yan sa church! Umiiman naman kayo para maagad tayo matapos. What happens? Destroy the church. I mean, listen to this, they have a great pastor, Paul. Apollos was a great preacher. I mean, I'm sure they were taught very well. They were very matured. But you know what they lost? Edifying love. They forgot, mga the knowledge of us growing the Word of God, being matured, is so that we could reach more people and bring them to Jesus Christ. Number two. Are you still with me? Amen. Number two. Look at your Bibles. Find the second insight from this chapter. Number two is this. Do you need to rebuke them? or help them be discipled with love. And let me say this ngayong umaga. Ano mo, 
I think church. I don't talk about church. I talk church. I was, one time this week, I was out. I mean, Pastor, I've seen your, your some Facebook. Nakita ko yung mga babate siya, Senator Alan Pitan Kaitano, ganyan-ganyan. Bago, ang gaganda na suot ng mga kwari niyo, mga naka-Amerikana. Nahiya kami sumimba. Sabi ko, sabi, bakit po? Kasi parang mayayaman lang po na andyan. Oh, mga naka-necktie, naka-Amerikana, carpeted, may aircon. Sige, sige, sige. Pastor, nahiya kami sumimba dyan. Kasi hindi kami mayaman, mahirap lang kami. And you know, when, when I was talked about that, naman naisip ko mga kabatid, are we telling the world, and I know, we know how we love to have a good church, great church. We love to have a great convenience. I love that. But I'm afraid mga kabatid, that our convenience and our, the way we are as we give to God our best should not be a hindrance mga kabatid, for people to know that, hey, we're an exclusive church. We're not an exclusive church, mga kabatid. Listen, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done in your life, if you come to CHBC every morning, Sunday morning, Sunday and Wednesday night, we're going to welcome you with love. Why? Because God loves you. We love you too. Oh, last Sunday, sa dami ng tao natin, nabasag yung salamin sa baba. Kaya nung, 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 nung uh, Monday, sabi sa kanya ng mga staff, Pastor, papaltan yung salamin sa baba. Magkano? 10,000. Masag. Sabi sa akin, Pastor, siguro huwag tayo mag-invite ng mga ganun. Kasi mahirap. Oo, mahirap talaga. Pero mga kapatid, listen, I know. Uh, I mean, I got, pastoring is 10% preaching, 90% administration. But kahit masakit ang ulo ko dahil mahal yon. Pero mga kapatid, basta mahal ang kaluluwa. And I know we were watching, you know, how Pastor Ruiz preached straight out. People were watching, listening, talking about a religion, talking about mentioning religions, mentioning things. So, nung isang week, somebody told me, Pastor, sabi niya, mahihir kayong simbahan, masyado kayong nangungutya. And I told them, listen, it's not really the intention. The intention is just to tell you what's really true. I hope that's a good, I hope that you did not offend because you know, don't judge us by just listening to one service. You come to church every Sunday and get to know us. Pwede kong i-argue sa kanila. Totoo naman ah. Si Kristo hindi lang just hindi lang tao, just talaga. Gusto mo patulong sa Biblia? I could do that. But what's this? Would I win him? Would I be able to bring him to church? Are you listening? Say amen. The problem of times in one church is this. We want people to be just like us instantaneously that day. Mga boy, look back. Bago ka nagkaganyan, hindi ka ganyan 20 years ago. Are you listening? Amen. Dati, hindi naman ganyan ang buhay mo, ang panalaw mo sa buhay, ang buhok mo, ang itsura mo. Ba't ka nagkaganyan? May nagmahal sa'yo, may nanalangin sa'yo, may nag-encourage sa'yo, may nagturo sa'yo. Sino ka ba? Tinataguan mo nga. Amen. Iniiwanan mo nga. Minsan nagagalit ka dahil napagsabihan ka, tinatama ka, pero pag uwi mo sa bahay, alam mo naman totoo. Nagsabi sa akin, Pastor, ayaw pumunta sa church niya minsan, lagi akong tinatamaan. Sabi ko, hindi ka malam ang buhay mo. Pero balik naman ang balik. Amen. O yung mga nanonood, ganun din. Marami nagko-comment, hindi naman natin nanonood lang. Pero ngayon na, nanonood na naman. Anong katotohanan? Because they know it's true. Yeah. And mga we're not just saying, tell them we're true. We'll tell them we love them because it is what God wants to do. That's a church, mga kapatid. A church is about people that needs the love of God, that is through God, that is to go to the world of God. That's a church, my friends. So when you're faced with a problem or a issue, ask yourself, do you need to rebuke them or help them be discipled in love? In closing, in closing, are you with me? Say, man. When you're faced with an issue, this is an insight now in this chapter. Is this an opportunity to show patience and extend grace towards others. 
Many times, mga kapatid, in ministry, and if you're part of our church for many years and you've been serving, mga you'll never understand this unless you are in ministry. You're serving. But mga kapatid, when you're dealing with people, there's going to be problems. Alam mo, sa simbahan, ang problema, hindi man yung poste. Amen. Hindi man yung mic. Hindi, hindi naman yung mga bagay. Ang problema lagi, miski sa simbahan, miski sa bahay nyo, miski sa inyong kumpanya, ay tao. Ito ang sasabi ko, sa, sa, sa kumpanya na unawaan nyo, may problema, gawa ng tao. Okay? Hindi nyo sinisisi yung pusa, yung aso. Di ba? Sa simbahan, mga kapatid, when we do people, when we do sinners, that's lost, have no desire for God because they're dead in their trespasses and sins. And we bring them to church. And they come to church not knowing any better, mga kapatid. Maybe first time to church. Maybe they've been in another church. But in church, mother, they know, they hear the Word of God, they read the Word of God. There are going to be problems, mga kapatid. So you know, what's the secret of the, the church that Paul is reminding his church? Hey, listen. You have lost not just your love. You have lost your patience and your grace. Let me say, mother, in our 18th year of ministry, Ito po ang totoo niyan. Habang tumatanda ka, miski physically, umiiksi ang pasensya mo. But ayaw umimen. Next week po, Grandparent Sunday. Alam mo ang totoo sa buhay? The more you get older, the more your patience shortens. That's also true in a church spiritually. The more we get older, the more we hear preachings, the more we hear teachings, the more we learn things in church. And when we see others who's not aligned with what we have heard, then our patience become very short. I always try to remind myself, mga kapatid, pastor as if you're starting. I was telling myself, pastor as if you're starting. If I pastor, mga kapatid, and deal with people, with who we are right now, I'll be very impatient with new people. I'll be very impatient, mga kapatid, with new believers. And if we are not conscious, mga kapatid, to ask ourselves, whenever there's an issue inside the church, among people, among Christians, we ask this, is this an opportunity to show patience and extend grace towards others? And listen to this, look back, remember where you came from. Look back, remember the day you got saved. Look back 10 years ago, 17 years ago, 21 years ago, of what kind of Christian life and perspective you have in life. And if there's no person mother, that loved you, prayed for you, helped you, encouraged you, reminded you, you will not be here today. So Paul really, my brother, is telling this church, listen, it's not really about the issue of meat. It's not really about the issue of him doing it. It's the issue of this. Is it an opportunity for us to be able to minister and show patience and grace towards others? Now, but then let me close with this. We all know we are saved by grace. My friends today, I am saved and going to heaven, not because I'm a Baptist, not because I come to church, not because I don't smoke, I don't cuss, I don't drink, not because I carry a Bible, not because I, I wear a suit, not because I have a good family, not because of it, because I'm a sinner saved by grace. You know what that means? I don't deserve it. In Bumaga, you don't deserve to be here today. The way you treat God, you don't deserve what God has given you. The way, mga we serve the Lord, I always tell myself, you know, if I receive blessing, you know, am I worthy of this? I, have, I think I've, I've missed something. Am I worthy? And I said, I know something. You know, thank you for your grace. Listen, the issue of this church is that they have been very convenient. They have grown, very knowledgeable. They have learned people inside the church. And now they're trying to compete with one another. Tell them, I'm much better than you. I know more doctrines than you. They forgot about the love, the love, and the grace, and the patience that God has given them. Today, I pray in our church, as we go on 18 years, as we grow, and God has blessed us, my friends, I pray we never lose the edifying love 
and show patience and grace to every person that God brings to our church home. Because we're saved, we made a church to see people saved, life changed, families built, the gospel preached, and people serving the Lord faithfully. Let's stand, head bowed, eye closed today. Piano playing, Ipumaga. This morning, as we stand and, and pray, before we leave this morning, we thank God for you. I pray uh, you understand, Ipumaga, that as we look at the book of 1 Corinthians, we're not saying we're better than you. We're just like you. Makasalanan. There are things in our life that God only knows that we would never be able to do something about. Not our works, not our religion, not our dynamic. It's the grace of God. Ngayon pumaga, maybe andito ka kaibigan, your first time. I said, Pastor, may, may simbahan ako, may religion ako, pero hanggang ngayon, walang pagbabago sa buhay ko. Walang katiyakan na aking kaligtasan. Hindi ko tiyakan na lang. Kaibigan, ang kailangan mo, hindi panibagong religion. Hindi panibagong simbahan. Ang kailangan mo ay tagapagligtas. At si Kristo lang ang tagapagligtas. Ngayon pumaga, bago tayo muwi, you say, Pastor, pray for me. Nais kong tanggapin ang Panginoon sa aking buhay. Nais kong magkaroon pagbabago sa aking buhay. Ngayon pumaga, you're gonna admit, you're a sinner. And only a sinner is a savior. So this morning, we'd like to pray for you. May lalapit po sa inyo. I'm gonna encourage you just for two minutes. Go with them. We just want to love you, pray for you before you go home. And tell you that Jesus Christ loves you no matter who you are. That's why you're here in church this morning. Would you do that? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Heads bowed, eye closed. People praying. Pumaga. Amen. Thank you very much for, for being honest. Thank you very much. We've got some people there. God bless you. Hey, listen. We're not going to bring you to a religion. I promise you, we're not going to bring you to a religion. But we like to let you know about the Savior that loves you. No matter who you are. He's given you hope. Died for you. And you could be able to know this morning you're saved going to heaven and have a changed life would you go god bless you all across god bless you god bless you god bless you amen people praying you people praying okay but let me ask you this if you're saved made a decision to accept christ do you still have that love that edifies do you still have that patience and grace to be able to bring others to jesus christ maybe we have forgotten that we've lost that i pray today we come said panginoon on our 18th year, Lord, keep us the same with that love, that grace in our lives. Altar open, God spoke to you. Get out of your seat. Come to the old-fashioned altar. I want to say, Panginoon, you've been gracious in my life. I want to be gracious to others. I want others to know the love you I've, I've had from me. Lord, help me grow. Help me mature. Help me be strengthened. But the same time, Lord, I pray I don't lose the love. I don't lose the patience. I don't lose the grace. That's you today. You come. Head by the eye. God bless you. Move forward in the old-fashioned altar. Get out of your seat. You come forward. God bless you all across this building. God bless you. Father, Lord, we have come today asking Panginoon that you continue to speak to us. Help us. Lord, thank you for those visitors of this morning, Panginoon, that made that decision to accept you. I pray now there will be salvation in our counseling rooms. Lord, I pray to you. Our people kneeling down. I ask, Panginoon, would you revive us, refresh us, renew us. May we serve you, Panginoon, not just with our knowledge, but, Lord, serve you with a love that wants to build others for you. Panginoon, give us, Lord, that patience, Panginoon, and grace so that we could minister to people. And I pray it would never be said in our church that, Lord, we have been blessed materially, physically. And yet, Panginoon, we have lost our love. We have lost the grace. We have lost, Lord, our patience. I pray, help us keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our knees bent. Keep our sword sharp, the Word of God. And allow us to fight the battles each day. And Lord, see people saved. And lives changed and families built. And Lord, the gospel preached. And our people serving faithfully. We ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Well, amen. Let's stand. Let's sing that song this morning, Brother Debs. Amen. Churches sing together still. Amen. Sing the first verse now. They say times are changing, so we should change to Trail old time religion for something new. Our faith is outdated. What well, they been? Just for me, I say love and not the word broken. 
go to church now. So I say on the old that that brought us this on, that saved God was in us and reached on and hearts. But though times are changing and forever will, there'll still be one Savior, one cloud in me. I still love to hear how God's love paid the cost, as fast as one of us And usher, come here this time as we honor God through our offering. If you're blessed and happy, say amen, cup your hands. The greatest thing we could do is give to God today as we worship Him in prayer. Father, you bless us so much that we ever deserve. Lord, today we give not to be blessed. Lord, we don't give for the result. We give for the purpose. We give because we love you. We love us. Everything we have, everything we are comes from me. When we give, we tell you are the source of all things. When we give, we say, Panginoon, that without you, we are nothing. Lord, may we give today faithfully, honestly, lovingly, cheerfully. And Lord, I pray you bless the Lord, not just our hearts, bless our hands today as we give and worship and on this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, amen. Let's give together today. Amen. Let's give together and let's sing, I have been blessed. All first verse now. When he moves among us, all that he does, all of his mercy, all of his love, if the pen of a writer could write every day, even this world could never contain how I've been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, laughter at summer, the changing of leaves, food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, and shoes on my feet, I have been blessed. Amen, church, let's church, sing. sing together now. Thank Him for 
Place, we the place where he hides me under his wings. He's not just our song. Just our song. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's the reason I sing. I have been blessed. What church sing loudly now? If you're blessed today, say amen, cup your hands. After prayer, you're, please, our visitors, first time, birthdays, don't miss, go to the Baptist Cafe, grab a cold drink. That's the only thing we could serve today. We don't have a, an espresso machine, so we love that you have come here. If you're a first time, please know that uh, we love you. We hope to see you again. I hope that you grow and you're blessed today. Let's pray, Father. Lord, today, it's your day, not ours. I know we have no right of being anywhere doing anything. And yet, Panginoon, we just give our three hours Sunday morning to our Sunday night. And Lord, we are ashamed because Lord, you've been faithful 24-7. And I pray today that we have worship with our hearts, with our minds, with our soul, with our hands. Lord, you deserve everything we have. And Lord, thank you for sustaining us last week as we begin this week, Panginoon, in our life, would you be able to go ahead of us to Lord to show us and be there for us would you go beside us to help us along the way and have the strength to make that step each day would you go behind us to encourage us push us when we don't want to go anymore and Lord we thank you for this church family thank you for everything that's everything that's been said everyone but that served and I pray you bring a bass tonight at four o'clock so that we could continue to grow together honor you love you serve you and Lord, that the world would say the god we serve the god we love and may we be able to bring souls to the foot of jesus christ and so now dismiss your people with love with your blessings with your grace with your goodness and Lord, we thank you we ask you panging on to be able to honor what we have given i pray you use it for a great week of ministry and may you bless your people knowing but wherever we are and whenever we can, everything you've given us, first to honor you. We love you because you first loved us. So we ask, in Jesus' name, we all pray. All people say, well, amen. You're dismissed. God bless you. Thank you for joining CHPC. We'll see you tonight at 4 o'clock.